Hello and welcome to the Superposition Guys podcast. My name is Yuval, and my guest today is Sam Stanwick, Group Product Manager, Quantum Computing at NVIDIA. Sam and I spoke about NVIDIA's CODA library, classical quantum integration at HPC centers, the advice that NVIDIA is giving its customers, and much more. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Hello, Sam, and thank you for joining me today. Hi, Yuval. Great to be here. Great to have you. So who are you and what do you do? Yeah, uh, my name is, is Sam Stanwick, and I lead the, uh, the quantum computing product team at NVIDIA. Um, so I've been doing that for about a year and a half now. Uh, my, my background is in uh, experimental condensed matter physics. Um, that was my, my grad school work. And then I, I worked for uh, a quantum computing startup called Forgetty Computing uh, for about three and a half years. Uh, and then uh, worked for uh, worked on the quantum computing team uh, at Keysight Technologies, uh, working on quantum control systems for for about a year, um, and now uh, now at Nvidia. Excellent. So we spoke um, last year, and at that time, Nvidia was just announcing some of their quantum products. Uh, so what's new since? What's new with Nvidia and quantum since we last spoke? Uh, yeah, a, a lot's new. So I think uh, last year we talked about uh, KuQuantum, uh, which is uh, the set of libraries that NVIDIA released for uh, accelerating quantum circuit simulation on, on GPUs. Uh, and the goal there was to, um, was to really enable algorithms research. Uh, so uh, probably as most people know, uh, today's quantum processors uh, are, are pretty limited in, in scale and especially in, in error rate. Uh, and so if you want to, um, you know, research and, and develop new quantum algorithms, uh, test out their, their sensitivity to noise, uh, try to kind of figure out for a given application uh, when quantum computing might be useful. Uh, simulation is a really important tool. Uh, and uh, the, the GPUs that we make are uh, very, very good for simulating quantum circuits. Uh, and so uh, KuQuantum was uh, released uh, a little over a year ago now. Um, and our, our latest effort is kind of um, broadening the scope from that uh, into um, thinking about uh, integrated quantum and, and classical computing. Um, so I think most most listeners of this podcast will, will also know that uh, as good as quantum computers get, uh, there will be plenty of things that they'll never do well um, just because of the, the kind of limits inherent to uh, using quantum physics to to do computing, uh, and so what uh, accelerated systems based on quantum computing are are going to look like in the future uh, is is quantum computers uh, tightly coupled to to classical computers, so uh, CPUs and GPUs and, and QPUs uh, all working together and um, you know in close communication and and each one uh, doing what it does best, um, and for uh, for that to work well uh, and for you know, a, a programmer or a researcher to be able to really take advantage of that, uh, we need software that um, enables uh, using all of these together in a kind of uh, a flexible way and, and in a performant way. Uh, and so last summer, we released a software called Coda. Uh, so Coda uh, stands for, sorry, I should say we announced software called Coda. Uh, Coda stands for Quantum Optimized uh, Device Architecture um, with the goal of um, enabling uh, easy and, and high performance uh, co-programming of quantum computers together with uh, classical computers, uh, CPUs and GPUs. Does that focus primarily on orchestration, making sure that the, HP, the classical part finishes and then send off the data to someplace and then get it back from quantum and so on? Or does it focus on taking a goal like optimization and then somehow magically automatically dividing it between quantum and classical resources? Mm -hmm. good, good question. Um, so it's a bit uh, different from and, and complementary to uh, tools for, for orchestration. Uh, so, so Coda is a, a programming model. Um, and if you're uh, familiar with, uh, with CUDA, uh, which is something that uh, NVIDIA has, has provided for a long time, uh, the, the analogy is what, what CUDA is to, to GPUs, uh, CODA is for, for QPUs. Uh, so you can think of CODA as a, a superset of either C++ or, or Python. Um, so you can do 
everything you can do normally in, in C++ or Python, including uh, calling CPUs and GPUs and taking advantage of um, accelerated software to, to run things on them. Uh, plus, you can add uh, quantum kernels. Um, so quantum kernels are, are denoted and, and compiled uh, separately uh, and um, you know, orchestrated then together with the, uh, uh, with the classical kernels and can be run either on uh, simulated quantum processors or on uh, physical quantum processors. Um, so it's really a, a programming model to enable um, you know, high-level co-programming of, of quantum computers with, with classical computers. Does the quantum kernels, do the quantum kernels support only gate-based machines? Or are you also looking at annealers or analog machines, other types of quantum machines? Yeah, good, good question. Um, so we, we think it's really important, especially at this point, to uh, support different models of, of quantum computing, uh, not just, just gate-based. Um, there's, uh, there's such a wealth out there. Um, you know, from more continuous variable type approaches that you might see with a photonic quantum computer to things like analog Hamiltonian simulation that you might want to do with a neutral atom quantum computer, um, you know, all, all the way to, to quantum annealing. Uh, and one thing that we did at the, the very beginning with Coda uh, is establish partnerships with uh, leading companies building different types of, of quantum hardware. Um, so that would be superconducting qubits, uh, spin qubits, photonics, uh, neutral atoms, um, and uh, trapped ions, um, and we uh, intend to to keep extending that. But we're we're working very closely with those companies to ensure that uh, the model at a high level um, supports all these different types of processors as as first class citizens. Um, and now you you probably will know that uh, compiling circuits for um, for these different types of processors looks very different, uh, and it will look very different in in Coda. Um, and you know some for some of them. It will be more of uh, you know interoperability than the kind of gate model compilation uh, we might do, uh, but at a high level in the model, they'll all be supported. One of the things that customers sometimes talk about is finding the best quantum computer or the best classical quantum combination for a particular problem that they have. How does your environment help in that? How easy it is to go from one type of machine to another, from simulator to actual hardware, and so on. Yeah, so I mean, uh, we think that that's really important work and really important to understand, and something that's really hard to do today. Uh, so uh, most quantum computers are, are programmed in the quantum equivalent of assembly code. So talking about individual gates and, and individual qubit rotations, um, and that is needed for for the work today. Uh, but it's not so easy to um, to integrate with, you know, for example, a, a, a machine learning workflow, say a, a generative adversarial network, where you want uh, you know one side of it to be classical and the other side of it to be to be quantum. Um, you need to go uh, learn a new language and, and figure out how to uh, kind of join those two, and you'll likely run into um, system and compilation level bottlenecks that'll make it really hard to evaluate. Uh, if you're actually getting an advantage. Um, and so the idea with with Coda is that um, you could really just start from a an optimized classical uh, computing workflow and you know ask the question, is quantum going to be valuable for this? Uh, and with Coda, just uh, take part of that workflow or all of that workflow and test porting it to uh, a simulated quantum computer or a real quantum computer uh, or just do resource estimation. Um, so, you know, we expect that it's going to be a really valuable tool for people looking to answer those types of questions. When you think about enterprise users that use GPUs today, uh, they could use them on a cloud, like on um, AWS, or they sometimes have their own high-performance computing center. How do you see quantum in general fitting into that? What do you advise your customers? How, how should they sort of physically get quantum involved in these workflows? We expect that long-term uh, valuable quantum computing is, is going to look like uh, quantum computers and classical computers uh, tightly coupled physically. Um, and so 
that is something that could be offered by a cloud service provider or could exist as, as someone's on-prem system. Uh, with that said, I think for the kind of work that, that's going on and, and needs to go on today, uh, it's, it's perfectly fine to have uh, classical computing resources and quantum computing resources that are, are not co-located. You're, you're still able to uh, understand a lot of things and, and develop new algorithms. Uh, you just often kind of hit the uh, communication latency bottleneck that uh, you know, long-term is going to prevent you from doing valuable quantum computing. Um, but you're not able to do that anyway right now. Um, so we think it's still, um, still a useful paradigm for a long time. Could you share a couple of examples of customers using Coda today and what they're doing with it? Uh, so Coda is actually not, uh, not released publicly yet. Uh, so um, that is, uh, l- look out for that a little bit later this year. Um, but we, we have announced a few partners. Um, I, can't, I can't talk in detail about what they're doing, um, but one, one group is uh, QPU providers. Uh, and so what they're doing is uh, connecting their hardware to, to Coda and, um, and working with us to make sure the model is optimized for their hardware. And so uh, that group right now includes uh, Quantinuum, uh, IQM, Pascal, uh, Xanadu, uh, Rigetti, and, and Quantum Brilliance. Uh, and again, we, we intend to expand that. Um, we've also announced collaborations with some companies developing quantum software and, and applications uh, who are looking to uh, build on top of, of Coda as a platform for that. Uh, that group includes Zapata, uh, QCWare, uh, Classic, and uh, Qubit Pharmaceuticals. Um, and then uh, the last group of partners we've announced publicly is um, a set of supercomputing centers um, who are um, either already or, or uh, thinking about uh, starting to integrate physical quantum computers with uh, classical supercomputers. And, and that group includes uh, Oak Ridge, uh, Eulish, and Rekin. If I understand CUDA, the classical part correctly, then NVIDIA engineers have worked really hard to make sure that I could run an algorithm in a fairly optimized way, regardless of what NVIDIA GPU I'm using. Do you see the same happening in quantum or do you think it's still very far away and every manufacturer is going to optimize the specific code to their particular hardware and and you'll just be, I think you call it quantum kernels, you'll just be integrating these quantum kernels together? So we, we think that there's some opportunity for that now. Um, but when CUDA came out, uh, GPUs were already kind of a mature hardware technology that uh, was delivering value in, in production. And, and we're not quite there yet with, with QPUs. Um, so it is a bit early maybe for, for standardization and, and a lot of optimization that we would do would, would be premature. Um, so we, we do plan to offer some of that. Um, but uh, the, the main plan for the moment is to, uh, to open source CUDA. Uh, and you know, work with hardware partners to build in uh, optimizations for their platforms, and you know, work with and allow the community to uh, contribute and, and build in further optimization. Do you see customers looking for sh- essentially shrink wrapped applications, just solve my chemistry problem, or do you see them looking more for an API that they can do whatever they want classically and quantumly? I think more the latter at, at this point. Um, if there's a uh, kind of uh, just direct set of steps to use a quantum computer to solve a chemistry problem at this point, I'm, I'm not aware of it. Uh, it's, it's more of the, um, the research and, and experimentation phase. Um, so we, uh, we tried to build Coda to be kind of very low level and, and flexible, right? It's just uh, anything you can do in, in C++ or Python, uh, you can do in Coda, uh, plus you can uh, uh, define bits of code that get sent to quantum processors, and, and that was a big reason why. You mentioned resource estimation. Does Coda also take care of estimating the cost of running an algorithm uh, here or there or in some combination of classical and quantum? Uh, so, so resource estimation is on the roadmap for for Coda. Um, of course, it's it's not uh, released yet. So, um, 
so it's not available yet. Um, but uh, yes, in, in general, we think uh, one of the most important things people need to be doing now and, and can be doing now to prepare for useful quantum computing is to uh, take the hard computational problems that they care about where classical computing might struggle uh, and do simulation and, and do resource estimation and, and understand you know, how many qubits do we expect we need for, uh, for a quantum advantage? Uh, what kind of error rates, how many clock cycles do we need to run um, to, uh, to expect a quantum advantage? And so uh, we're, we're gonna try to enable that in Coda. As we get close to the end of our conversation, I wanted to ask you a hypothetical. So if you could have dinner with any of the quantum greats, dead or alive, who would that be? Oh man, uh, save the save the hardest question for last. Um, I guess the uh, the first person that comes to mind is is Feynman. Um, so you know, in addition to being incredibly brilliant in, in a lot of different domains, he was, um, as as many people know, very kind of charismatic and interesting to uh, to listen to, and and a great teacher. Um, and he was. Uh, uh, you know, one of the early, very early people who who talked about you know what a quantum computer might might do as far as simulating nature. Um, so I would I would think he'd be pretty uh, pretty interested and excited to see kind of how far things have come in in the last few decades. And uh, I'd be really interested to to get his perspective on it. Perfect. How can people get involved with Coda? Learn about it. Uh, perhaps get eventually trained on using the, the new offering? Uh, good, good question. So we have a, uh, we have a website. Um, I'm, I may butcher the, the URL, but I think it's uh, developer.nvidia.com slash slash Coda, um, where you can apply for early access. Um, if, if that URL is not right, I think just searching for it uh, should, should bring it up. Um, you can also, you know, feel free to, to reach out to me on, on LinkedIn and, you know, look out for an announcement of a public beta later this year. Excellent. Thank you, Sam. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Yvonne. It was great. Great to be here.